there are moments when you could not feel safe and those moments can be everyday moments and even in the familiar there can be unfamiliar moments unfamiliar senses that heighten and that can cause you to tense up there are going to be moments where you'll be able to draw on things in your past that connect to your present Street Lights was my first ever poem that I performed. And there's something special about spoken word. There's something special about cadence and movement out loud for people to consume and go on a journey with you. And so I'm hoping that we go on our journey together now. I was afraid of a shadow last night. On the corner of Decatur and Malcolm X, the streetlight did a flex and I could have sworn there was a rapist behind me. I swiveled around, both ready and unprepared to protect myself. Thankfully, I was the only one on the street. I picked up my pace the rest of the way home, holding my keys like a shank ready to strike. I was afraid of my shadow last night. Not because of any power it holds, but because of stories that have been told, bodies that don't make it home. I've looked cute enough for them to claim I'd have wanted it. I walked home, my voice so hoarse from a cold that they claim I didn't scream. Been too broke to buy an Uber, leaving walking home is my only means. I only take two routes to my house. Both so familiar, I can avoid the uneven pavement as I stride. Know which curb will post the most trash on collection day, knowing the bodega cat does his rounds. But familiarity stands no chance against a man wanting to get in your pants. So one night when I thought I heard the leaves dance, I ran. Google Maps says I live about eight minutes from the train. That's equivalent to about three songs. I never walk with my tunes on full blast. Instead, I tune into my surroundings. Who can I see? Who can I not? I lean on the shadows to let me know if others are close. I stared at myself for a long time in the mirror last night, trying to study my frame, memorize my pose, to get so familiar with my being that even being seized by the cusp of the night, I wouldn't hand over my power. See, men take their power. We'll place hands over your body uninvited. Though you woman, your job to extinguish a flame, you ain't ignited. And in these states that be united, this is the divide. When I was younger, my mother would mandate that I get home before the street lights come on. The flicker of their awakening, a signal of the shift. Where strangers find their courage, where uncles forget to view you as their niece. More noticeable that your skirt stops above the knees, conditioned to know that part of the responsibility for my safety rests heavily on my shoulders. I was afraid of a shadow last night but it must have been my fault for letting the street lights beat me home. There are actually a couple of lines in the poem that I just love. Um, when I say that's equivalent to about three songs, I never walk with my tunes on full blast. Instead, I tune. I love that because my tunes is iTunes, which is on Apple, and then I tune into my surroundings. I was like, that's it. <laughs> so I love that line. Um, I love how I keep bringing up last night, but it's different. So afraid of a shadow last night, my shadow last night, stared in the mirror last night, and then at the end, I hook it all together with, I was afraid of a shadow last night, but it must have been my fault. So now we've, we've turned the poem like all the way around um, using this same thing, but it's not too repetitive in my opinion. It's these different, these four moments and beats that happen within the poem where I um, bring up that statement. So I just love that continuation throughout. And I think that um, my cadence in Street Lights is just so, I love it. There are pieces where it's up and it's high tempo and the words are coming out fast and you gotta keep up. And there are moments when it's slower and I want you to feel what I'm feeling. I want you to hear what I was hearing. And again, this is the first poem that I ever shared on a stage. It's the poem that when I got home, I was like, I need a podcast. Like, this is how I decided that I was gonna do that. And so I love Streetlights always because I trusted myself. I trusted how I felt and I trusted myself on stage. I even messed up 
Actually, when I say Google Maps says I live about eight minutes from the train, on stage when I performed, I said Google Maps says I live about eight minutes from my house, which it's like you live eight minutes from your house or you live at your house. It's like it doesn't make sense. But when you watch the original video when I first perform it, I don't even know. I, my friend had to tell me after because um, she had heard the poem before I performed it and she knew that I wasn't supposed to say that. I didn't even notice. And I think that is the beauty. That's the beauty of power in your prose when you are just sharing and it's so true to form where it doesn't take away there could be a blip in your story there could be a mess up anything and it's not about perfection it is about the storytelling it is about the art it's about the craft and i think that whether you're a writer or traditionally a writer right or not that can't be taken away telling your story people connecting with that people feeling that and having imperfections in your story that's something all of us have that's universal no matter who you are your story isn't going to be perfect streetlights is a story about me walking home it's a story about many women walking home our senses have to how we have to be tuned in to things that are happening around us how it's not just a walk home how there are people who never have made it home how we don't want to be like them how we memorialize them every time that we walk every time that we feel unsafe and that happened to me. It's a true story. There were moments when I was walking home. There was a day, there was a night <laughs> when I was walking home. And yeah, the light had flickered. Like it just gave an eerie feeling. And what I love about Streetlights is it wasn't for anyone. It wasn't for anyone to hear. It was me making it home, feeling relief, but also still grippling with the fact that I was scared. <laughs> I was scared when I was walking home. And so it was simply me picking up my pen and exploring those feelings, exploring those sounds, exploring why the nighttime feels so different to me than when I walk home during the day. Why walking home in the winter when the sun goes down sooner is such a I robot, I gotta get in, shut the doors moment. Why does that happen? And so that's what Streetlights is. And I think that a lot of people can relate to it because unfortunately a lot of women feel unsafe in a lot of everyday times. I'm inspired by me. I think that because I'm writing my words, I understand the pain that's behind those words. I understand the joy. I understand the sadness, the depression. I understand the having to speak my truth and understand how hard that is to know that I have a choice not to, but deciding to show up even for myself in a way that is authentic, true to me, that's unapologetic. And that's no small thing. There are moments when you say things even to yourself that are difficult. There are moments when you admit things even to yourself and you're like, I can't believe I think that. There are days when I don't want to show up and I show up anyway. I bring my pen and my paper anyway i bring my thoughts anyway i bring my pain my happiness anyway and that is inspiring the fact that i started writing off of a fifth grade assignment in class and have stuck with it to now years later that's inspiring to me the fact that i don't have to show up i don't get paid to write but i show up that is why i do it that's what's inspiring to me it's me it's the growth that's on the other side of every poem that I finish, every time that I share, every time that I share behind the pen and why I wrote something. People can connect with it. There's a vulnerability in that as well. And that's inspiring. And so there are many poets that have come before me that I'm inspired by. There are many poets that um, were born after me <laughs> that I'm inspired by. Many books, documentaries, spoken word as a genre, so many open mic nights, YouTube videos, I could go on and on that have inspired me. But what gets me to wake up, what gets me to pin is me. And I'm, I'm so thankful for the little girl in fifth grade that picked up her pen, that decided to share something that was vulnerable to her, that she felt was only unique to her. And she was able to connect with so many people here today. I, I, I'm inspired by her.